so if you're watching my videos uh, in order, in the last video that we, we looked at with regards to cellular respiration, we looked at something called aerobic cellular respiration. What happens when there is oxygen present? So in this video, we are going to look at the second type of cellular respiration, and that is anaerobic cellular respiration. This is what happens when oxygen is not available to, uh, to organisms. And, and the reality is organisms still need, even if oxygen isn't present, oxygen still needs, uh, sorry, um, energy still needs to be created. So we're going to look at anaerobic cellular respiration. And that is when oxygen is not present. So I'm going to draw here oxygen and I'm going to put a kind of just like that, no smoking sign. Right? So oxygen isn't present. And this is what we call anaerobic cellular respiration. There are two forms um, of uh, anaerobic cellular respiration. And in turn, they're actually called really fermentation. So we can say that there are two types of fermentation. The first one being known as ethanol fermentation. And that's the uh, first one that um, we are actually going to look at. And the second one being lactate fermentation and in brackets we're going to put down lactic acid and actually we're going to put down alcohol and you'll understand what I mean when we um, actually um, expand on this but the one we're going to look at right now is ethanol fermentation. So now what happens is um, pretty much the, the notion of, of um, ethanol fermentation is very similar to glycolysis, right? So what does that mean? Well, remember what we talked about, if, if you look back at the video, we had glucose and glucose is going to undergo glycolysis to form 2-pyruvate. And at the same time, while that is being done, we're going to have two molecules of ADP that is going to package energy to form two molecules of ATP. Right? And, and if you don't understand this, again, go back to, uh, to the video. So what happens is this process of glycolysis will take place in organisms, regardless of whether oxygen takes place or not. So this is really the first step of glucose breaking down. However, it's not until we get to this part after the pyruvate, right, where the two molecules of pyruvate will undergo a further breakdown to form two ethanol, to form two ethanols, right, and at the same time form a waste product of carbon dioxide. So now what, it, what, what occurs here is that there's an enzyme in the cytoplasm, right, that is called pyruvate, pyruvate decarboxylase, boxylase. And what it does is it's going to remove carbon dioxide molecules, right, it's going to remove CO2 from the pyruvate Right, from the pyruvate, converting this pyruvate into two molecules of ethanol, which is an alcohol uh, found in alcoholic beverages, right? So pretty much we're going to, this process is what's used to create wines, to create beers, to create other types of liquors. In fact, it's actually, this process is also used to create certain pastries and certain breads uh, and some types of soy sauces. 
So this process is still important, even though we, we look at the, the, the notion of no oxygen present. However, this is an important and valuable step. Now, the next type of anaerobic cellular respiration that we're going to look at is lactate fermentation. And again, now this is very similar, no oxygen present. Right? So let me uh, just put that as our heading. So lactate fermentation. And I'm just going to put firm for, um, for short form. Now, here's the thing. We have... Uh, typical um, glycolysis taking place, right? So we've got glucose, C6, H12, O6, breaking down on, through a process called glycolysis, as usual, to form two molecules of pyruvate. All right. So this process, this glycolysis process, as usual, takes place. And as we, we've seen it time and time again, we had two molecules of uh, um, two molecules of adenosine diphosphate (ADP) that bottles up energy that is available in the glucose to form two molecules of ATP. So this process takes place as usual. However, when you're working out, right? So you're, you're in the gym or or you're out running and you're exerting some kind of strenuous exercise, right? Your muscle cells well, really are trying to break down this glucose. And the thing is, your muscle cells, they're breaking down this glucose a lot quicker than oxygen is actually being supplied, right, to form the ATP. So what happens is this process of glycolysis, this is typically your, your oxidative, right, um, this part, typically is, is the oxidative respiration. And so if you're breathing in oxygen, that is aerobic, right? That is aerobic. However, you're huffing and you're puffing. All of a sudden, the amount of oxygen that you're bringing in isn't enough, right, to, to allow for this supply of, of energy. To, to. So what happens is aerobic cellular res respiration starts to slow down and this lactate fermentation actually starts to begin. Right, so this is typically going to form. However, with the pyruvate, the pyruvate molecules are going to further break down into two lactate molecules. Right, and how does this do? Well, there's an enzyme in the cytoplasm, right, called lactate dehydrogenase. Hydrogenase. Right? So there's this enzyme in the cytoplasm that will convert this pyruvate into two lactate. Now, this, right, this lactate, right, these lactate molecules, they're actually going to collect in your muscle tissue, right? And that's what's going to pretty much cause really the, the stiffness that you feel. Um, in, uh, in those muscles, right? You're going to start to feel tired, right? You're going to start to feel sore, right? And so it's not until pretty much the exercise ends, right? Maybe the end of the race or the end of a set, right? That that lactate, right? That actually gets converted back into pyruvate, right? Which now can go into the mitochondria to undergo now what we call aerobic cellular respiration. So this lactate fermentation is when the body cannot take in the oxygen quick enough, right? And, and, and it, this happens when you're, when you're working out. So what happens is when the body's typically trying to undergo glycolysis, as it normally will, it wants to go into the Krebs cycle. However, because not enough oxygen is available, this will not go into the mitochondria yet. This will actually take pretty much this first step here, right, to form the two lactate. And then it's not until the exercise is over or, you know, you kind of slow it down that this lactate can come back, reform into pyruvate and enter the mitochondria to undergo the typical aerobic cellular respiration that will give you the most amount of ATP energy.
right? So now, this extra oxygen that your body needs in order to allow for this to happen, this is what we call uh, an oxygen debt, right? So your body is undergoing what we call an oxygen debt, right? And think of any kind of debt, you got to pay it back. Right. So what happens is the body pretty much at the end uh, uh, of your exercise or right, you're panting and you're, you know, your tongue's out, you're, you're just kind of heaving away, trying to bring in as much oxygen as possible. You're hunched over and you're sucking in as much oxygen. You are right now paying back that oxygen that your body has needed. Right. So this is your way of paying back the oxygen. In the, that auction that, that enabled the lactate to eventually convert back into pyruvate to be able to go back into the mitochondria and undergo aerobic cellular respiration.